warning this is going to be a long intro but i think it's important for me to introduce it this way roughly one minute about a subject that i should have talked about a long time ago So you have probably guessed that we're going to be talking pole dance photography. I've been shooting polos for more than three years and I've included images that were filmed back in 2015 in that intro. Shooting pole dancers is really fun. Uh, it's not that different from shooting a dancer, for example. Uh, some of them even have a background in contemporary dance, ballet, gymnastics, even hip hop. And you start feeling when you watch recent videos of competitions and shows, they incorporate different styles, different flavors, and that's what makes it really, really interesting. I don't know if you guys can remember, but I've shared with you already five tips on posing dancers. If you haven't seen that video, please go check it out because it might help you with pole dancers too. So let's get into it. If you were planning on shooting pole dancers very soon, well, these tips are for you. My very first tip will be inform yourself on the level of your performer, the performer you're shooting. A lot of amateurs, of inexperienced pole dancer will try and do very difficult moves and difficult poses. They will ask you to catch it quickly because they won't be able to do it twice and the only time they will manage to get up there and make it, it will look like crap. So if you're working with beginners, ask them to make simple poses and moves. Concentrate on the mood and attitude. You will increase your chances to make good images and they will thank you for that. Number two, if you're going to work with intermediate, advanced, pro performers, ask them to prepare mentally the shoots, to prepare poses and moves they master. You can lose a lot of time, a lot of precious time by trying to figure out what to do on the spot. I even asked them to practice to rehearse the poses and moves before the photo shoot. They even bring with them on their phone or on a piece of paper uh, images of what they wish to do. This helps me place the pole and even think about all the compositions that I want to make with them. Number three, if your client asks for 20, 30, 50 different poses on the pole, just say no. It's physically impossible you know even pro performers at best they can make you 10 to 15 different poses discuss everything that you wish to do on the pole beforehand place your lights do your test shots you can't ask them to do this 20 30 times in a row so when everything is in place when everything is decided this is the only time when you can ask your performer to get up there and make your shots. Number four, one of the main drawbacks of shooting pole dancers is the pole itself. It's pretty damn heavy, takes some time to set up and you gotta think about that beforehand. You can move it around but not so much unless you have a whole team with you. So that's when your imagination comes into play because you will want to make different type of images, different looks. And the only way to do that will be to use different focal lengths. You're gonna shoot tight. You're gonna shoot wide. You're gonna shoot from up close. From far away. from up above or from down below. Yeah. 
this will really help you to get a wide variety of shots without moving that pole. Number five, spinning or static. The pole can stay still, static, or it can spin, spinning. This is up to you and up to your performer. The advantage of having it in static mode, having it still, is that you can place your model, think about all the details, place everything where you want them to be and just, you know, create, make your picture. The only issue is maybe your performer prefers when the pole is spinning. It's maybe easier for them because it's like making, doing an actual performance. And of course, if you want to capture a realistic motion, a movement, having the pole spinning is your best option. So if the pole is spinning, don't improvise. Think about your shot and know exactly when to fire and what you are going to capture. Choose with your performer the best angles, lock your focus beforehand or use AI servo. Yes, I'm a cannon shooter. And hold on tight, get your timing right because you're not going to be able to do this a thousand times. I love details, I love precise compositions. I love placing things in specific precise places. Heads, arms, legs, body, anything. And with pole dancing, with pole dancers, I had to accept that not everything will be where I want it to be. Depending on the weather and the quality of light, if I shoot outside, I will use natural light. Or maybe add a strobe. Merci. If I shoot indoors, I will shoot with one strobe or maybe two. Because yes, I didn't mention it before, but I mainly shoot on location. But I guess you have probably guessed it by now. So that's it, these are my fire tips, you know, that you might consider if you wish to step, to do your first steps into pole dance photography. If you have worked with pole dancers in the past, please feel free to share your experience with us in the comments section below. So that's it for this week. I hope you learned a thing or two. Please give a little thumbs up for support and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you wish to know where I am right now, what I'm currently working on, please join me on Instagram. Rendezvous next week, ladies and gentlemen. I hope to hear from you guys real soon. But until then, please have a good one.